take questions from the audience. And the question is, Jonathan, why does it seem like I like men more than they like me? Jonathan, why does it seem I like men or I seem like I like men more than they like me? And I, I think this is a great question. And I pondered on this quite a bit for um, before I was preparing for this. And it occurs to me that this is a common narrative in the dating, mating, and relating process. And this is actually something I heard in a movie called The Ghost of Girlfriend's Past. The Ghost of Girlfriend's Past, which is Matthew McConaughey plays a player, um, or his character is a player, and he's talking to his uncle, Michael Douglas, who's the quintessential player on the planet. And at one point, Michael Douglas is giving advice to a young Matthew McConaughey in the movie. And he says, the person who cares the least has the most power. I'm going to repeat that. The person who cares the least has the most power. And I thought about that. And that was really a fascinating comment to say. But in some level, there's truth to it. The person who cares the least, the person who's the least romantic, the person who makes the least effort, in relationship oftentimes has the power because the other person is wanting the other person to care more, to make more effort, to be more romantic. So they're doing things to try and to coerce the other, coerce the other person, coerce, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Darn it, I'm brain dead here for a second. No, take that back. I'm not brain dead. I'm just uh, brain fogged right now. Um, and to liking them. And this is oftentimes I witness women who give their power away to another human being. Let me repeat that. Women give their power away to men oftentimes. Now, in some ways, you're set up for this because the whole dating dance, the mating dance, has been predicated throughout history that men are the leaders of the relationship. In fact, throughout history, it's always been a one-up, one-down dynamic, meaning men are literally, not figuratively, literally on top of women. In other words, they are in charge of the relationship. So literally throughout history, you've been indoctrinated with this, with this understanding in relationship that men are in charge, they get to do whatever they want, and women have to follow. So I think on some level, you've just been indoctrinated with giving your power away to men. And that includes caring more than they care for you. This is why, by the way, my coffee mug says, do all things with love, do all things with love, which is apropos with what I'm about to share right now. Because folks, I really want to encourage the, for the person who wrote in, reading the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated. This is a great book to lean into a non-gender specific way of approaching relationship, but really approaching a relationship from a heart-centered space of not giving your power away to another human being by retaining your sovereignty so you can actually evaluate the relationship based on how much investment he's making into the re relationship. Let me repeat, you're evaluating the relationship based on his investment. So for those who follow my work know I like to use the analogy of two cars traveling down a road relatively at the same speed. That's a relationship in a two-lane street. In other words, a two-lane street. In other words, you're traveling at relatively the same pace. But if your pace is much ahead of his and he's dragging back, and again, this isn't about moving slowly. It's about how much his effort is. He's not demonstrating he wants an exclusive relationship. He doesn't necessarily feel like he's having enjoyment when he's with you. He doesn't check in with you regularly. OK, just what I named of those, uh, just to repeat those five things, he expresses exclusivity. You rarely ever go uh, 48 hours without talking to each other. He schedules time on you at your schedule and not necessarily always his schedule. He appreciates talking with you. And finally, he includes you in his outside life. Men who care less don't do those things in relationship and men who genuinely care genuinely into you will make that kind of effort. And so when you're in a relationship where you care about him more than he cares about you, I highly recommend having a serious conversation within the relationship 
and to determine if it even makes sense to be together. Ladies, if you follow my work, you know, and I repeatedly talk about the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, and why I recommend this book, especially before the penis ever goes inside the vagina, is that you better deter, it's, listen, I'm a big proponent, ladies, of what I call pre-qualifying your prospect. In fact, those who hire me for coaching, and by the way, there's a link to a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My job, my expertise is to help you pre-qualify your prospect. In other words, determine the true compatibility between two people, learning how to ask the right questions to determine compatibility, and how to vet for emotional maturity. Because if you follow my work, you are familiar with the relationship iceberg, the relationship iceberg. I'm gonna put a little bit closer on the screen. And the relationship iceberg goes like this. This is the top above the water line is attraction. And the tip of the iceberg is chemistry. What's below the iceberg is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. And as you start checking these boxes, the water line of attraction starts going down. But sadly, in many cases, Many of you don't share the same values. Many of you don't have lifestyles or blendable. And lastly, as I said before, 80% of the population is emotionally immature or emotionally stunted at best. And this is men and women alike. So what's the most important theme of what I shared just now? It starts with self-love, folks. Again, my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway, is such a such an important tool to lean into loving on oneself. This isn't feminine, feminine, and I'm gonna, I'm going off on a tangent here because I get up, I get off on the whole concept of masculine feminine energy because I know many of you have been indoctrinated. If you just sit in your feminine energy, a man will just naturally gravitate towards you because being in your feminine is just so magical. What a crock of shit that is, in my opinion. You know what's magical? is self-empowerment, self-reliance, self-discipline, self-respect. I shared earlier about a woman who's been in a year and a half relationship with a man who's never been to his home. What kind of self-respect is that for you? I'm sorry to judge that. I mean, when I, well, I'm not sorry to judge it, but if that sounds judgy, my apologies. But I'm here to say, self-respect means you actually, if, if, again, if you're having sex with another human being on a regular basis, you have every right to learn things about their life. I got to tell you something. There are a lot of scam artists out there. There's a lot of flaky people out there. It's important to vet this person. I mean, we should be doing background checks and have police investigate, not police, detective investigations or background investigations on people. Because nowadays, when you're meeting total strangers, especially off the internet, folks, it's a scary place if you do not have, if you do not know somebody that knows this person, it's a scary place to be for men and women alike, and mostly women. So I'm here to encourage vetting much better jobs so you don't find yourself in a situation where you care about him more than he cares about you and he has all the power in relationship. If you wanna retain your power, retain your sovereignty, your self-esteem, your self-confidence by loving on yourself. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I wanna thank that person who called in for that question or wrote in that question. Thanks a bunch. All right. Let's take a look at what we have here. 